All right, what's up, y'all? You're kicking with the Junkyard Dog on JunkyardDog.com. Happy 4th of July, everybody. God bless America. I am happy to be here in this country where we are free. Anyways, so the next thing we're gonna work on is the suspension. So I left the caster camera place loose. I left the, uh, the coilovers loose. I left the spindle loose. I left the hub loose. I mean, everything is just loose. I mean, even with the, uh, the steering rack, it's all, everything's loose. Um, I just did that just to kind of like get things in place and then start to figure out what I want to do with it. So I'm gonna put on the arms, put on everything, get it all bolted up, and then we're good to go. And then after that, I'm going to install the T56. You guys saw me do all the adaptations and all the other good stuff, so boom. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on, get that knocked out, knock, and uh, get it installed. So the only thing I'm worried about with that is it's gonna kind of be hanging because I don't have a cross member for the T56. I'm gonna use this opportunity to cut one out of cardboard and use it as a, use it as a template and uh, make one, so that should be fun. I'm thinking of maybe using a Fox one and kind of like adapting it or something, but uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Because I got a few of the uh, Fox mounts uh, laying around for the T5, but I know absolutely for sure that they do not match. So after we install the 6B, finish with the suspension, plug the back of the heads. So since we're done with all the painting and everything, this is what we're gonna do today. We're also gonna install the radiator since now the mounts are painted and ready to install. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and mess with the Eaton M90 intake. We're gonna go ahead and drill and tap the base plate. I'm only gonna do two bolts, or actually studs. Reason being, I would like for me to be able to just have two of them tap just so I can check the location. Now I'm contemplating on moving the superchargers even further out uh, to meet another location in the belt system. And I'll explain that in a little bit too. So here we are on the ground, which I absolutely don't like working on the ground, but hey, we're gonna make it happen, all right? Uh, there is a technique that I use when installing a, t a transmission that's as heavy as this one by myself. You guys have seen me muscle T5s in, no problem. Well, this is a whole other beast, okay? Um, there's more gears, it's a little bit more heavy uh, for me to deadlift up under there by myself. So I'm gonna show you a little uh, technique when your, uh, when your friends suck and nobody wants to come help you. <laughs> I got the bolts all cleaned and ready to go. Uh, for the into the bell housing, I got my socket. I'm gonna use thread locker and very interestingly, a tie down strap, all right, and a jack. All right, so this is uh, my technique that I use. Um, I've used it for years because, uh, you know, like I said, I've had to depend on uh, myself to get things done in a timely manner. So, yeah, so first thing we're just gonna kind of I put some cardboard under here to kind of, uh, you know, stop the transfer getting all scratched up since we got it all pretty. And uh, yeah, we'll get started from there. So let me relocate this camera to underneath the car and let's get cracking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it forward and arc it like this and take the uh, input shaft and rest it on the edge, okay? So I usually put up like a rag or something so it doesn't gall it or whatever, but you just rest it on the edge of the uh, bell housing. So there it is, six speed is in. So 
a bit of a struggle. Um, it's a way, way tighter fit than a uh, T5, obviously, but it fits. Didn't have to bang it up or anything, as you can see there. You know, got it all made it up. So one thing to keep in mind when you're putting in a uh, transmission that's this heavy is that it's got to be completely in alignment before it slides all the way in. So what I had to end up doing was I put a jack, I, I loosened the, uh, the engine mounts and I put a jack under the front of the motor and uh, jacked it so it angled down and then it slid right in. And I struggled with that for about 30 minutes before realizing that was what the problem was. It was, it was buckling. So yeah, got it in. All right, so let's move on to suspension. So here's the A-arms I'm gonna use. I was just recently told by Mr. John Duncan that uh, there may be an issue with these. He said that they had some issues with these cracking or whatever. So, I mean, as of right now, I'm gonna have to use them. He said there's something I could do to reinforce them or whatever, but suspension is uh, bolted on. Spindles have been modified. Uh, the A-arms are in, in a neutral position. I got them right in the center. Uh, same thing with the caster cam camber plates. I got them in a neutral position as well. Yeah, I also noticed that the uh, steering rack needs to come forward a little bit, so I'm gonna um, add some spacers in there too. Actually, I'm gonna use the same style washers as I used right here, some thick washers. Uh, after I finish with the suspension, I'm gonna go ahead and start fooling with this again. I talked to a guy named Steve out in Florida, super helpful, great guy. We were just going over some of the finer details of getting this motor to run. What we came up with was that we could actually use, um, instead of me going with the Pimp XS, which is what I was going to use, is a Mega Squirt 3, and that would allow me to control. On this motor, There's um, this is an Explorer motor, so there's provisions for a crank trigger, and there's a cam sensor as well in this, or a crank trigger. Uh, cam trigger you know it's kind of similar thing i'm not super super certain because it's, i'm new to that system so we won't be running a distributor we're going to be running coil packs and i'm going to tuck the coil packs so you're not even going to see them it's, the motor is literally just going to look like this and you're going to wonder like where are the wires how is it running you know so um another thing um i suggested by another U uh, youtube uh, uh buddy was to put a temperature sensor right here uh, to, to, to operate the fans here on the radiator. So back here we got these fans and we want them to cut on at a certain temperature. So he told me to drill and tap this hole right here. It pretty much has a provision. What I was gonna, gonna do is leave it right on here, drill and tap it and suck all the chips out of that um, my hole with the vacuum. So yeah, I really appreciate everybody who's coming with uh, ideas to help. You guys are the real MVPs. I really appreciate that. It really shows the community coming together. Uh, just not for on my behalf, but just period. You know, people wanting to see cars run and stuff, and I think it's super dope. So yeah, let's get to work. Quit this jaw jacket. All right, so the plate here, I ended up um, drilling some studs. I'm drilling and tapping some holes for some studs. So what I did was, I just put a nut on it for right now. Um, people are saying Healy coil, all the other good stuff. I'm sure it will work perfectly fine. But um, this is quarter inch. I don't know if that's enough uh, uh, aluminum to hold it uh, in place, but uh, it's a quarter inch of aluminum, man. Um, seems pretty pretty uh, robust to me. I got a couple good threads in there, but I don't know. Let me know your opinion if, if that's enough or you think I should still go on ahead because really I was trying to some some guys suggested don't use rev nuts, which is a great idea. I don't think I'm gonna use those at all, but on the other hand some other guys were saying hey you should weld a aluminum uh, nut on the back here. Here's the thing guys. I want to keep this as flat as possible and to get to welding on it It's gonna start getting all wobbly and weird um that's just my theory, but let me know if you think that that's something that will that will happen or not. Uh, just let me know, because if not, then I'll go ahead and weld some nuts down there. It'll give me some more. But these are automotive studs, so they stop at a certain point, which I think is really dope. 
And yeah, so I just put two of them in there. Uh, this thing is fairly expensive. The studs are like $1.50 each. So basically at this point, I'm gonna take the supercharger. And this is one of my test fitting superchargers. This one, uh, unfortunately, got sand in it. There, boom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the bolts down. And then we'll go on ahead to the car and stick them on there, see if they fit. And the way I designed the base uh, was to okay, check it out. So the way I designed the base was to be able to hold these in place while I slide it back and forth like I showed you guys before. So let's head over to the uh, mayhem right now and see what's up. Boom. All right, so looks like this one should come back just a little bit more, but um, because I left so much extra on the back, it won't go back any further. All right, so this presents a whole other issue here. Um, at this point, now I got them mounted and I could slide them back and forth, you know, kind of. So at first I was gonna have this meet the rest of the system here, right? First problem is I'd have to have a custom belt made because it's really long for me to go up down up and then around everything i have to give a really long belt problem with that is is where it's more accessories riding on one belt also too you have to give a, a thought to these slipping as well because they slip because it's a supercharger you know when you gas it's going to slip just a little bit and kind of shred on the uh on the belt so i started toying with the idea of maybe adding a pulley on front of this and then a pulley on front of the alternator and a tensioner here and then moving it forward just enough to where the supercharger literally the air would be pumping right behind this wall right here right and i got another power uh, power steering pump pulley from uh, explorer and the bolts are 5 16 18 they go in there so i'm just going to use these studs just for the sake of just to show you guys what I was talking about. So you get this, uh, like this double pulley effect, right? Uh, so you get two of them on there, right? So I don't know if this is gonna work because uh, you really wanna run supercharges off the crank, but uh, you know, my buddy Steve said that uh, I don't need to spin these that hard because I got two superchargers, so I don't need to spin it as hard. So I'm thinking maybe I could kind of like piggyback off of this power steering pump and then the alternator have uh, have another pulley on the outside of this too. Um, somehow get them made it up somehow. I, I don't know how I would do it, but I'll figure it out. So the belt would literally go from here up, down under a tensioner of some sort, up around the alternator, and, uh, and and back around, you know, like so it'd be like boom, 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 like that, like the letter M, you know. That's just something I've been fooling with. Um, I appreciate everybody's ideas and everybody's suggestions. So if you have any ideas on how I could run this, this that would be dope too. Because like I said, I'm thinking about running a dual pulley here and a dual pulley there and then maybe a tensioner like I said of sort, sort, some sort in between here to keep it uh, in place. I'm not trying to add any more weight up here so um, the tensioner will most likely come from down here maybe something attached to the front of the intake something like that. Alright so that's it that's where I'm, that's where I'm at right now uh, six speed installed radiator installed uh, superchargers, drilled and tap, and uh, suspension installed. So I'm gonna just go on ahead and figure out the um, brakes because I'm gonna clean the uh, the calipers and everything, and we'll do a little episode on that. I kind of don't even want to paint them. I just want to polish the hell out of them and put one of the uh, KBS's Diamond Clear over it and install them to stay with the raw metal theme. 
And uh, then we start kind of looking at how we're going to hook some of this stuff up. Get the wiring going, uh, the coolant. Because once we get the belts all on, then I got to figure out how to get the, the coolant to where it's going to dodge all of this. Also, too, just, you know, like the clutch cable, stuff like that. Just getting stuff hooked up. This is exciting, man. I'm excited. All right, so that's it, man. We had a full, full episode full of great stuff for this happy 4th of July. I am so happy to be in this country. Thank God. Uh, you know, I could be somewhere in a crap hole somewhere, but I'm here in America. So thank you so much for tuning in to my show. Uh, thank you so much for helping me, you guys, with the build and, and giving me all those tips and everything. Um, yeah, I'm still open for suggestions as to what to do and everything, but yeah, that's it, man. We're getting it in. We're getting it going, all right? So uh, until next time, jump yard, doggin'. Whoa!